No one knows for sure what is being heard when tuned into radio frequency 4625 kilohertz. Secret coded messages sent across airwaves between governments and spies. A doomsday signal ready to sound the alarm of the apocalypse. Or a mysterious transmission tuned to interact with the ionosphere. Known to be of Russian origin, though this has never been confirmed by the Russian government, the signal was a continuous broadcast of repeated pip that has since become an unsettling, looping, and buzzing tone. For decades, the source of the broadcast was entirely unknown, until suddenly and unexpectedly, the first spoken words on the station identified it as UVB-76, broadcast from a military bunker in Poborovo, a small town 19 miles outside of Moscow. This interruption was soon followed by new strange and unsettling additions, rustling of someone moving around nearby, a harsh voice reading a series of names and numbers, and faintly sinister music playing in the background. The ghost station was first documented and recorded in 1982, but is thought to have been in operation as early as 1976. The looping sounds broadcast over the frequency were originally a pair of pips in quick succession. However, in 1990, the sound changed to a buzzing tone, leading to the station's popular nickname, the buzzer. The tone sound at approximately 25 instances per minute, and with few notable exceptions, have continued 24 hours a day without interruption since the station was first detected. On Christmas Eve 1997, the first documented vocal transmission over frequency 4625 interrupted the buzzing tone. A Russian voice read a message over the air. The station returned to broadcasting the buzzes, but it had also given itself a name, UVB-76. Though the frequency of the tone has changed, sped up, or slowed down over the years, vocal transmission and abnormalities of any other sort were rare on UVB-76 following that first message in 1997. Another clue to the transmitter's setup came on November 3rd, 2001, when the station picked up what seemed to be a snippet of conversation between two people in Russian. This translated to, quote, I am 143, not receiving the generator. Quote, that stuff comes from the hardware room. This overheard dialogue seemingly confirmed one of two popular theories, that the buzzing tones were not internal and pre-recorded, but an amplified sound, captured by an always live microphone placed nearby. That, or another microphone in the area, had accidentally been left on. A handful of shortwave radio enthusiasts have continued to tune into the station, eager to claw away at the mysteries behind the looping tones. On June 5, 2010, the station went silent, a break in the station's pattern. The buzzing ceased, without explanation. After approximately 24 hours of radio silence, the buzzes resumed as normal. That same month, Estonian engineer and shortwave user Andras Aslade created an internet station that broadcasted the UVB-76 signal. This online stream brought in listeners from around the world, new ears that arrived at a transformative time in the station's history. On August 25th, the buzzing ceased again, followed by the overheard sounds of knocking, shuffling, and footsteps. Aberrations continued into early September, as listeners noticed the buzzes being interrupted with recorded snippets of music, specifically Dance of the Little Swans, from Russian composer Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. On September 7th, a more dramatic, substantial change occurred, beginning with another voice message that seemed to announce the station's new call letters, Mikhail Dmitry Zhenya Boris, or MDZHB, followed by another long series of numbers and letters, a send-off message to the former call letters UVB-76. On November 10th, now operating as MDZHB, another overheard conversation was broadcast. This identified as a phone call. A male voice mentions, quote, the brigade officer on duty. The communication code debut 
and the name Nadezda. A female voice replies, Officer on duty of communication node debut, Senior Ensign Uspinskaya, got the control call from Nadezda okay. The conversation was longer than any other recorded on the station to that point, and its purpose, and the station's purpose, remained obscured. Though many have mulled over the meaning behind the mysterious ghost station, one of the leading theories was that it was some kind of number station, transmitting messages in secret. Thought to have existed since the end of the First World War, number stations were public radio broadcasts used to encrypt and send messages between government intelligence agencies and their spies. The system, pioneered by the Soviets and quickly adopted by other world powers, involved generating coded messages, typically sent in a series of five numbers or letters obscured of any meaning. The message could then be decoded using a one-time key shared only with the intended recipient. Because these number stations were broadcast publicly, it was nearly impossible for rival governments to track or identify the recipients because they could be one of any number of listeners on their frequency and listening in from anywhere. To truly randomize the encryption process, the codes were sometimes even assembled by capturing street noise with microphones and creating a code out of the words and sounds captured. This way they could ensure that no pattern in the randomization process would give away their encryptions. So it seemed possible that MDZHB's purpose could be to send coded messages, but voice transmissions after the first in 1997 were very rare, and the buzzing sound itself seemed consistent in tone and tempo, to the point where it did not seem likely that any sort of meaning could be encrypted into the buzz itself. Another popular theory was that the buzzer was being used as a dead hand signal, a kind of trigger that would fire on the occasion of a nuclear strike against Russia. In the case that such an attack crippled Russia's military force or communication network, the buzzer could be triggered to launch an automatic retaliatory strike. Such a device has long been rumored to exist. However, the way that the buzzer broadcasts hints that this is likely not the case. UVB-76 uses a shortwave frequency, meaning fewer waves that could travel further by ricocheting off charged particles in the atmosphere, allowing them to move around obstacles and obstructions without interference. This has made shortwave popular for use commercially and by the military. However, the layer in which shortwave frequencies travel is not static. It moves depending on the time of day, climbing upwards during the day, then descending back towards Earth at night. For a dead hand signal to be effectively used and reach as far and wide as possible, it would need to change its frequency based on the time of day, as the BBC World Service does. The buzzer does not. Another theory, originating from the Borak Geophysical Observatory, was that the station had a scientific purpose, the frequency being used to measure changes in the ionosphere. However, at 4,625 kilohertz, the signal would have been subjected to all kinds of interference, leaving it virtually useless in terms of measurement. It is also not known what interest the Russian military would have had in this science. The leading theory, then, is that MDZHB is being used as a military communication system, operational across Western Russia, and used to send occasional messages between districts and units. The buzzing sound is used not as a coded message itself, but a placeholder noise, filling the station's vacant waves with a deterrent buzzing sound so that it would be less likely to be used by other shortwave users. A photograph posted on a Russian Wikipedia page seems to confirm this theory, depicting a framed piece of paper on display in a Russian military recruitment office that contains a prominent mention of 4625 kHz. Since S. Slade first moved the stream of the MDZHB station onto the internet, its listeners have grown exponentially, numbering in the hundreds of thousands. One lingering question had always been that of the station's location. Though originally triangulated as operating from a radio tower in Povorovo, it was thought that after the commotion of September 2010, the broadcast moved elsewhere, perhaps due to a relocation of the Russian military. A former high-ranking European official identified as JM located the new transmitter near the town of Peskov, close to the Estonian border though an exact location could not be found. This move prompted two groups of intrepid adventurers to explore the former broadcast site at Povorovo, hoping to obtain some kind of clues or context as to its definitive purpose. On their way to the base, an old man in the nearby town told them that a storm had passed through in 2010. The area was covered in a dense fog, and under this veil of secrecy, the base had been evacuated in 90 minutes. When the explorers found it, the base had been abandoned. Its complex of military buildings were littered with left-behind equipment and belongings. The radio station was found at the end of a one-lane road. The radio tower, rusting, between 100 and 150 feet tall, with satellite dishes attached to its sides, 
loomed over a shed stuffed with electronic equipment and some kind of ancient stone structure covered in moss. They located the large underground bunker nearby, where the signal had been broadcast for so many years. One of the members of the team described the room as, quote, a quiet and lonely dark place, something like a maze with lots of corridors and rooms. Perhaps the most exciting discovery in the bunker was a book of logged messages confirming its use by the Russian military as a kind of communication channel. As suspected, all signals were tuned to 4625 kilohertz. Although some of the mystery of the station has been scraped away by online sleuths and real-world adventurers alike over the years, nothing definitive has ever been confirmed or issued by the Russian government. Today, the station is thought to broadcast from a single location in Moscow, and it has since renamed again to ZHUOZ. Ghostly messages still sound periodically, indicating that the station is still being used by the Russian military. Whether it is a secret spy station, a doomsday insurance policy, or an even more mysterious atmospheric test, we may never know. While the ghost station continues to light up the airwaves, we remain in the dark.